Okay, we're talking about voting today, um, and the first thing that you're going to be asked to do as you're working on your homework is to create what's called a preference schedule. Um, in order to create a preference schedule, what we're going to have to do first is we're going to start with what's called a preference ballot. Um, a preference ballot is just an individual voter's ballot where the voter is going to list each candidate or alternative in order of preference from first to last. Um, this is going to be a little bit different from like your typical US election ballot. When you're trying to vote in an election here in the United States, you're going to get a list of all of the candidates that are running and all you do is you vote for your one single favorite candidate and that's it. Um, when we're doing a preference ballot, it's a little bit different. Um, a preference ballot gives a complete ranking of all of the candidates from first to last place. Um, obviously, it probably just takes way too much time, energy, and um, calculations for um, us to run a U.S. election ballot or campaign this way where you vote for your favorite candidate and then next person and then the next person after that. Um, just voting for the one single top candidate simplifies calculations by quite a bit. However, there's a whole bunch of problems with that sort of a method and we'll ta be talking about them over the next little while here. Um, and so to be able to get better ideas of different types of voting, we actually need a full preference when we're running a campaign. Um, and so we want each voter to actually say not just who their favorite candidate is, but to rank the candidates in order from favorite to least favorite. All right. So to do this, it's, it's really not too hard. Um, it's just a matter of basically organizing ourselves fairly well. Let's do an example here where we have four different candidates running for an election. We're going to have George and we're going to have Holly, and we're going to have James, and we're going to have Inez. And these four lovely souls are going to be running for some sort of candidate office. Let's say they're all running for president of some exciting school club. Uh, and so what you're going to do is you're going to ask everybody voting in this particular election to choose, or not just to choose, but to rank these four categories in order of um, most favorite candidate, most favorite candidate to least favorite candidate. Um, so when you look at your first ballot, for example, I might see that they want George in first place, and then in second place they want Holly, and in third place they want James, and in fourth place they want Inez. And so that might be the first ballot that I get in. Now when I look at the second ballot, they may have things ranked in a different order. This person liked Inez the best, and then Holly, and then James, and then George for last place. So certainly a different ranking. Now let's suppose, just to simplify things, let's just look at six different um, six different ballots. Um, the third person here wanted George in first place, then Holly, then James, and then Inez. Um, the fourth person also had that same idea, George most popular, then Holly, then James, and then Inez. Um, the next ballot that we got has um, James as the most popular candidate, and then George, and then Holly, with Inez at the bottom of the stack. Um, and then the final ballot that we look at has Inez in first place, Holly in second place, and then um, James, and finally George. And so the first thing that you're going to have to do with any election is just collect the ballots and look at what you've got. Then we want to create what's called a preference schedule. And essentially all that a preference schedule is is it's a table that tallies up the results of the different preference orders. When I create my table, what I'd like to do is I'd like to write who's in first, who's in second, who's in third, and who's in fourth. And of course, how many places you have just depends on how many candidates. We've got four in this one, so we're going to have first through fourth place. And then what we're going to want to do is we want to actually go through and um, identify how many um, voters, so the number of voters, that felt like there was a particular style that they, that they preferred. So in this case, for example, let me, let's do it this way. Let's look at this first candidate's ballot. They wanted George first and then Holly and then James, and then Inez. Now, if I look through here, do I see if, I, I want to check and see, did anybody else have the same voting preference? 
um, this person did, this person did, George, Holly, James, Inez, and this person did, George, Holly, James, and Inez. Everybody else had some sort of different preference order. And so what I want to do is I want to take these candidate sets and say, ooh, there's three of those that all voted in the same way. And so I'm going to tally them together and put their total in this column here. This is really going to simplify all of our calculations for all of the different voting types that we're going to be doing later. Um, then I'm going to look at the next voting um, preference. In this case, oops, let's see what we got going here. In this case, my next set here is has Inez in first place, and then Holly, and then James and George, last of all. So if I look here, did anybody else have the same preference schedule, IHJG? I see here, IHJG, I have another person that had exactly the same voting preference. And so when I come here, I would just say, in summary, two of my voters had this same preference for first through fourth place. Um, when I'm done with that one, I go and look. I've already looked at all of these ballots already. So the only ballot that I have remaining is this last one. And in this one, I had James first, and then George, and then Holly, and then last at the bottom, Inez. That's the only ballot that I have left, and so they, I have one there. And that's all there is to creating a preference schedule. So it's just a matter of look at the voting preference, put it in a table of first through fourth or third or fifth place, um, however many candidates you've got there. And then just total how many had exactly the same ranking. Um, if, there, if you look and there's a different ranking, it makes a different column. And then you just total up what each one has. Um, a really good double check when you're creating these sorts of things um, is to total up the number of voters. In this case, 3 plus 2 plus 1 makes 6. I had 6 ballots to start with, so I didn't miss any. And um, that's always a good thing to double check. All right, sounds great. Go ahead and try your first couple of homework problems. You're just going to be getting a list of preferences and then create a similar chart, something like this.